Hey everyone, welcome to 59 Tops Friday, presented by Wax Pack Wisdom, where we talk baseball history through the cards we love. My name is Jake T. O'Donnell. We built the iconic 1959 Tops baseball set, and in this series, we're going through every card to talk about the players, teams, and people who made up Major League Baseball in 1959. Today, we'll cover cards 1 through 9 in the set. Card number one belongs to baseball commissioner Ford Frick. 1959 would mark the eighth full season of Frick's tenure as commissioner, a position he held until after 1965. Frick was a sports writer and broadcaster when he was hired as the National League's PR director in 1934 and became league president later that year. Frick succeeded Happy Chandler as MLB commissioner in 1951. His most lasting impacts included expanding both the American and National Leagues from 8 to 10 teams, expanding the schedule from 154 games to 162 games, and working to establish and grow the National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum, to which he was elected in 1970. Most controversially, Frick recommended attaching an asterisk to Maris's then-record 61 home runs in the 1961 season because of the aforementioned expanded schedule. It's worth noting, this was never reflected in any official record book. Card number two belongs to Eddie Yost of the Detroit Tigers. 1959 was Yost's 15th season in the big leagues and his first away from the Washington Senators where he was their longtime third baseman. Yost was ahead of his time as a hitter. He had few peers in his ability to draw walks. He led the American League in walks six times, including 1959. As of this recording, Yost remains 11th in Major League history in walks drawn. Prior to the 1959 season, the Senators traded Yost to Detroit to make room for a young infielder named Harmon Killebrew. Killebrew was outstanding in 1959 and eventually made his way to Cooperstown, but Yost answered with perhaps the best season of his career. In addition to the aforementioned walks mark, Yost led the AL in runs scored in on-base percentage in 1959 and hit a career-high 21 home runs. Following his playing career, Yost was an MLB third base coach for the expansion Senators, Mets, and Red Sox. Card number three belongs to Don McMahon of the Milwaukee Braves. 1959 was just McMahon's third year in the big leagues, but he'd already made an impression as the relief ace for the Braves in 1957 and 1958. For the world champion 57 club, McMahon debuted in June and posted a 1.54 ERA in 32 relief appearances and then tossed five shutout innings in the World Series versus the Yankees. The following year, he made his lone all-star appearance for a Braves team that again won the NL pennant but would lose to the Yankees in the World Series. McMahon led the NL in games finished in 1959 with 49. This was before the save was an in-vogue statistic. McMahon would pitch for six other teams in an 18-year MLB career, including the 1969 World Champion Tigers. He was later a pitching coach and scout for MLB teams. Card number four belongs to Albie Pearson of the Washington Senators. 1959 was Pearson's second year in the big leagues. After a trade from the Red Sox prior to the 1958 season, Pearson, who stood just 5 feet 5 inches tall and was the shortest player in MLB during his career, took Washington's starting center field job and hit 275 on the year with just 31 strikeouts in 610 plate appearances. For his efforts, he won the 1958 American League Rookie of the Year award. But success in Washington was short-lived for Pearson. After hitting just 188 in his first 25 games for the Senators in 1959, Pearson was dealt to the Baltimore Orioles. He shuttled back and forth between AAA and MLB for a couple years before getting selected by the expansion Los Angeles Angels before the 1961 season. A California native, Pearson's career was revitalized, and in 1963 he made his lone all-star appearance while hitting 304 for the Angels. He retired after the 1966 season, became a Baptist minister, and his later years founded an organization aimed at helping less fortunate children in America and across the world. Card number five belongs to Dick Donovan of the Chicago White Sox. 1959 was the ninth big league season for Donovan. He began with his hometown Boston Braves, but struggled until learning how to throw a slider. 
Following a brief stint in Detroit, Donovan made his way to the south side of Chicago and became a mainstay in the White Sox rotation. He was an all-star in 1955, and two years later he finished second in Cy Young balloting after posting a 2.77 ERA in 28 starts, 16 of which were complete games. The White Sox won the 1959 AL pennant, although Donovan had a pedestrian year by his standards and pitched poorly versus the Dodgers in the World Series. He rebounded with all-star seasons for the Senators and then Indians in 1961 and 62. Donovan retired after the 1965 season and enjoyed a successful career in business in the Boston area thereafter. Card number six belongs to Alex Grammis of the St. Louis Cardinals. 1959 was Grammis' seventh year in the majors and the start of his second stint with the Redbirds. Mostly a shortstop in his career, Grammis played around the infield for the Cards, Reds, and Cubs over 10 MLB seasons. Grammis was a light hitter but had a reputation as a strong defender. Following his playing career, Grammis spent nearly three decades as a manager and coach in the majors. Most notably, he was a favorite lieutenant of Hall of Fame manager Sparky Anderson. Grammis was the third base coach for the world champions of both 1975 in Cincinnati and 1984 in Detroit under Anderson. Card number seven belongs to Al Polarczyk of the Baltimore Orioles. 1959 was the fourth season in MLB for Polarczyk, who would play a total of six years between Baltimore, the Kansas City Athletics, and the Chicago White Sox. He mostly played center field and right field, and in this year, 1959, Polarczyk led the AL in sacrifice hits with 13. Possibly the most memorable moment of his career came at the end of the 1960 season when Ted Williams' final MLB home run sailed over his head into the bullpen at Fenway Park. After baseball, Polarczyk returned to his native Indiana, where he spent over three decades as a high school teacher. Card number eight belongs to the Philadelphia Phillies with the first team checklist of the 1959 top set. Unlike later years, when Topps would use such cards to list the accomplishments of the previous year's team, 1959 Topps team cards served a more pragmatic purpose, checklists for the different series of the set. The Phillies team checklist covers cards 1 through 88. As for the Phillies team itself, this was a lean era for the club. Hall of Famers Richie Ashburn and Robin Roberts were winding down their time there, while starters Gene Conley and Jim Owens performed admirably, it wasn't enough to elevate the Phillies from the National League basement where they finished for the second year in a row. They would finish there again the next two years as well. Card number nine belongs to Paul Giel of the San Francisco Giants. 1959 was the fourth of six seasons Giel played in the majors, and he admittedly had a pretty nondescript baseball career. He only tossed 240 big league innings, for four teams with a 5.39 ERA. Giel is likely best known for his college football career, where he starred as a tailback for the University of Minnesota Golden Gophers from 1951 to 1953. A two-time All-American, Giel finished second in the Heisman Trophy voting in 1953. He was later Minnesota's athletic director and was elected to the College Football Hall of Fame in 1975. That's going to do it for this edition of 59 Tops Friday on Wax Pack Wisdom. Do you have a story about one of the people, players, or teams we discussed today? Let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear it. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our Wax Pack Wisdom content. In the description of this video, you will find our source material for this episode, as well as links to where you can follow Wax Pack Wisdom on all social media channels. You'll also find a link to a list of our favorite nonprofits and charities. If you enjoyed this video, please consider a donation to one of those organizations. It would mean a lot to us. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time on Wax Pack Wisdom. Take care.